What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Transformer Basketboats favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Fans Toys Sea Spray 2.0. I am doing this review Thursday afternoon uh, because I know it's a hot button. I want to have it up for Friday. So hopefully I got it done in time. I got this from Nick the Toy Guy. It's where I get all my Fans Toys stuff from. I love doing business with him. You may also hit him up. His information is in the description. A lot of times people say, well, he's already sold out. Like, well, hit him up now for the next thing, right? It's kind of how what I'm saying. If it happens to be sold out, I'm not sure that it is. I'm just saying I've got that as feedback before and that's my feedback to your feedback so anyway this guy does come with a couple accessories so there's no better place to start so he comes with two guns they are just gray plastic uh nothing really to see here nothing to write home about uh just some decent sculpt work and he'll hold those just fine with your typical tab inside of the palm masterpiece style connection they'll also store in the front of the boat inside of these little slots here however um, they're a bit of a pain to access if you have already closed this so I'll show you where I do it during transformation when we get there but that's one option the other option is around the side you can open up these flaps and actually sit the gun and peg it in there's a small place where you can peg it in there and close the gap on top of it and you can actually have them um, offset to the sides of the vehicle as well they, they jut out a bit because of the um, the angle there, but it's, it's still something you can do and it fills out that space. So I might take advantage of it if you were planning on keeping him in alt mode. And he also comes with the alternate head sculpt with the no eyes, the visor look with the grates in the mouth, if you'd prefer that. This is all one piece, like this intersection. I would have liked if you could have kind of swapped the pieces where you could have had the grates on the eye version and vice versa, but whatever, this is this is what you got. And that's all there is to talk about. So let's talk about the figure. And it is pretty nice. It feels much more like a return, in my opinion, to fans toys style. Whereas the, the, the what was it, the drag strip, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> it felt like the B team took over a little bit, in my opinion. This one feels much more what I have come to expect from this company. Um, so I'm anxious to talk about it. However, it doesn't mean it's perfect, and there are a number of things with this that are also what I've come to expect from this company that aren't the greatest. So let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, the yellow is painted. The blue, I think, is painted as well. And I think the white, I think it's completely painted. If it's not, it's the deep-seated speckled plastic, which looks good enough. It pops well enough. That might be what the blue is. The yellow looks painted to me, and the white looks painted to me. And if it isn't painted, it looks painted. So either way, high quality choices. All right, so the head is on a ball peg. You can probably see it in there. We have metallic blue eyes that look great against the gray that's also painted. So all of that looks nice. You get a little bit nice. You don't get a lot up. Uh, it's very limited up. You do get a, a fair bit down and you get the swivel and you get, uh, you don't even get the confused sea spray look because of the shape of the helmet. All right. Very limited sculpted details throughout as well, trying to stay tuned, true to the tune aesthetic, which you know I am adamantly against. You can do both in my opinion. Fan has done both for a long period of time. I wish they would give me a little bit more sculpted detail. But it is what it is. I get it. I understand. All right, so you do get a waist swivel. Unfortunately, you only get a little bit before you have to break sort of the chest connection pieces. Not the biggest deal in the world, but just something that we've been noticing more and more often with fans toys is that you just they they lack articulation in in uh, to or up to the kind of current day standards. They kind of need to catch up a bit in that regard. All right. And then we have the spinning propellers. We have universals for shoulders. That'll get you past 90 degrees and around and you get a little bit of the fans toy squeak in there. So there's that 90 degree elbow bend on a single hinge, not double jointed, which is also kind of one of the things I've been talking about recently. And you have a bicep swivel. You have a wrist swivel. Oh, no, you. Oh, yeah, you do. I thought you did. I was going to say, but it's limited also because it bumps up against these two sculpted pieces that bump out there. So not the best there. And then you have the fingers on a base pin knuckle. Uh, which I think is fine. I, I think a lot of people today are doing more independently articulated figures than you need to do, and this works just fine. They're, you don't need the index finger to be pointed separately, especially when they're going to be rounded out like this. It'll only give you a tight rider finger, or like he's doing the GDK hand sign. So like, 
no, not not the best choice. So I think that this is the smarter choice, the old school choice of just having all the fingers on a base pin knuckle. And then you can at least have a relaxed pose or gripping the weapon or making a fist. And all three are pulled off fine at a decent probably price point for them to make and a good display aesthetic for you. All right, enough about that. On to this side. We do these little sculpted squares there in the little circles, and that's pretty much it. All right. Hips. Universals. Full Van Dam on tension, ratcheted forward and back, uh, but not for the full Monty. But more than you'd ever need, right? Five swivel built around the Universal, that works just fine. As you can see, metal parts there for the um, Universal build. We have ratcheted knee. Single hinge, but gets you past 90 degrees, so I think that's fine. And then we have the ankles, which are pretty interesting. Also, that little sculpted detail there and there, which is which is cool, looks good. Um, so the feet are actually on double hinges, so you can get them up and get a full ankle tilt up and down, which is nice, and a decent rocker. Not the best, but a decent one. So the feet are actually really well done. And then they have a little bit of sculpted detail in there. They have the blue translucent pieces. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. Uh, there he is from the back. I love the little vents and stuff and the yellow on there on the back. Um, this dude is, he's got, hopefully he doesn't have one screw loose, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of them back there. But if you're going to have screws somewhere, you know how I feel, put them on the back of the figure. Because the front of the figure is what you're going to be looking at, and it looks great. So, let's move on to size comparisons. Size comparison wise, there he is next to an MP car. So, I would say that's just about on brand, so to speak. And there he is with Spindrift 1.0. Some people have been asking for reverses of these two. I don't know if it necessarily makes sense because they're not trying to do the same thing. And I think we did a versus with him and the X-Transbots one. If I come across the X-Transbots one again, I would do a versus with the new Spindrift with it. But otherwise, I think I'll let it go. There is stuff I still like about this first Spindrift. Like, I like the color breakup in the chest. I think he looks a little cooler. Like, that aesthetic doesn't look as accurate, though. Totally understand. Totally get where people are coming from. Uh, I'm definitely going to switch out just because the collections as a whole are going in a very much more accurate route so it makes sense but i don't know an, an interesting piece in fans toys history for sure either way and there he is in my diorama on my shelf where where he will be spending the rest of his days um you know definitely fits in better aesthetically you know with the super cartoon accurate bots that are now dominating the space no doubt about it looks much more like part of the same fabric um which I do appreciate. Sum is greater than the, or the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Let's get him transformed. So this piece here has to be separated. It's on a tiny little ball joint and it wants to give uh, far more than the joint does. So you may run into issues with it popping off. If you do, just pop it back on. This here, comes out and then this piece spins out or drifts out am i right spin drifts out and then let's see what else you gotta do okay so then we gotta bring down this double hinge here and rotate this until this piece is in line with all of this so there we go i'm gonna flip this piece up there. And then this can come back around. We're going to be oh so careful so that it doesn't pop off the ball peg. We're going to peg those in. And we're going to close this up so that this peg here goes into that hole there. Called the peg pin, do you know what I mean? All right, so same on the other side. Once again, we're gonna try not to get this off, so to speak. Just, there we go. Just be careful with her. It's a loose little joint in there too. You know how fans toy stuff can be real loose? Um, like the, the hinges and stuff that are like transformation hinges. This is uh, on par with that. And spin drift this piece out. Spin drift this piece out. 
and then double hinge your ankle and tuck this piece around. Mm. I'm meeting some resistance here. There it is. Whew. And then I'm going to push that little piece out. That's for the alt mode, I mean, for the weapon storage. So I'm just getting it out now so that I don't have to do it later. And then same thing, tab this back in and then flip this piece around and tab that back in. Uh, so one and then two. All right, then for the arms, flip out this piece and then flip this whole piece up over top and then flip it back down on the hand. Something new and fresh for uh, a hand covering. Turn it to the side and collapse it down. Same on this side. We're going to flip out that little piece. We're gonna use that as a lever to flip the whole piece out and around and then close it back up. Turn it to the side and collapse. Now we're gonna do some prep work. So untab the backpack from the back um, it's on a massive peg here, so just untab that and then lift up the upper body from the lower body, but try to keep the backpack part down. Uh, this, I mean, theoretically, you could use this for your waist swivel too, like you could do it and then put it back in, but it's never going to sit, I don't think it's ever going to sit quite right, is it? No, because you're still dealing with the same physics, right? So, no, but another option. So make sure that this is pushed down as far as it will go. And then you want to flip this out and spin it around to the front. On the front, open this up, open this up, uh, spin, flip, spin, drift, all of these flaps out, and you want to flip that piece out and around, all right, and then collapse the waist back down and we'll tab the feet in together so you have something like this before, oh, you can flip these down too, I believe. Uh, before we start to kind of bring all of this together in sort of typical fans toys fashion, which I'm going to prepare myself for. Bring the arms down, they tab in right there into the side of the white chest and then the blue tab will tab into the bottom where the feet are. Same here. Into the chest and then into the feet. And I may not have this collapsed as far as I can get it. Let me see if I can get it any further. But the next thing we're going to do is bring this blue piece down. That will capture front tabs here and peg in to the arms and the feet, I believe, down here also. Once you have it collapsed all the way, which mine is not entirely done right. Okay, and then take these pieces, they'll double hinge out, angle them down so that they are pointed towards the slots in there, and, and then tab them together. Once again, I think I got a little bit of collapsing to do, which is going to be the, my, my undoing, I'm afraid, for the video anyway. There. <laughs> now I've done it all. <laughs> uh, you'll get the point. And then close this up here. Close these pieces. Bring this flap up and around. This here does spin drift. If you want to flip it for like the Autobot symbol. I don't have one on there anyway, so what's the point? And then spin this up. Spin drift that up rather. And then that's pretty much it. Obviously, I got a lot of cleaning up to do, but it's it's a pretty decent, straightforward, fun little transformation, honestly. Let me get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. 
and there it is and I, i've tried to clean it up the best i can but i am under a bit of time constraints and it's uh it's giving me a little bit of grief so i would imagine that if you keep messing with it that you will get it lined up the the parts that are problematic are getting the waist squished down as as close as possible it does have wheels so it will roll um i'm not sure that you needed to or not but it will i also like i'm having a hard time getting those flat i don't know I'm willing to chalk it up under user error because I, I haven't had much time to deal with it, if any, really. I like the grates in the back. A lot of sculpted detail actually ends up coming through in this mode, including those vents that I spoke about earlier. I would have liked if those windows had paint on it, but then... Um, well, no, that wouldn't have been invisible in robot mode, right? So I would have liked if those had paint on it. That feels like a... Uh, like a, a, a short-sighted thing. And then um, these gaps here in the side. I wonder, actually if uh the guns fit in there too because that seems unless i have something transform wrong it doesn't seem quite right does it oh yeah you can you can have them in the side so i will have already shown you this but this is when i actually learned it <laughs> so anyway uh that's cool and yeah, uh, that's about all I got to say about it, man. Uh, the, the yellow paint there is a nice touch. The blue speckled plastic, which is what I think it is after handling it more. But you know what? It could be paint because I'm not seeing it on the underside of it. Either way, it looks good. It looks striking. It looks interesting. But more, most importantly, it looks even better next to Tiger Tracks. So it's about the size of an MP car. Um, you know, maybe actually a, a little bit bigger if we go all the way to propeller. So, you know, pretty cool little guy. Not for nothing. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. They are few and they're kind of exactly what you would expect from fans toys. This is really a paint by numbers fans toys approach. And that's not a bad thing. It's just definitely a, a case of it. So let's talk about it. There's some tolerance issues. You heard some fans toy squeaks specifically in the shoulders. Also where the waist pulls apart and collapses. It's a little hard to kind of get it quite right because you don't want to put too much stress on it where you feel like you're putting stress on the piece. However, it also takes a little bit of effort to get it undone. Same with the massive tab that goes into his back. Some of that's because of paint. Some of that's because of tolerance, some of that's because of clearance, etc. etc. The other issue is another kind of typical fans toys issue, which is articulation. The original spin drift has double jointed elbows. The original spin drift has more of a waist swivel and a bit of an ab crunch. The original spin drift has double jointed knees with a wider range. I'm not saying that it's a better figure, but what I am saying is that over past couple years, as I have mentioned on this video, I did a whole sit down Saturday on it. Fans toys has definitely parked articulation at the rear of their priorities, and I'd like to see them improve there a bit. More head articulation here, double jointed elbows, more wrist articulation, would have actually gone a long way here, along with an ab crunch, or at the very least a full waist swivel. However, much like I stated in typical Fans Toys fashion, this is a very stereotypical Fans Toys piece. It does all of the things right that Fans Toys usually does right. That is, sculpt 100% on the money, presence 100% on the money, paint and deco choices, whether it be plastic, whether it be paint, metallics, flats, etc., all lend themselves to a very dynamic, bold, pop, striking looking figure. Per usual, something about the proportions, Fans Toys always seems to nail. This is no exception. The materials feel great. Good plastic, metal joints, good ratchets. The articulation is fair. And honestly, the transformation is kind of a breeze, especially in comparison to what Fans Toys usually has to offer. You know what I mean? So it's a strong recommend for me. It's a great, solid, well done figure. Exactly what I expect from the company. The only downside is the negatives, with the exception of the engineering for transformation, is pretty much exactly what I expect of the company as well. So yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.